The Q presents On the Ground. Welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We are on the ground at the Santa Clara Convention Center at the Anita Borg Women of Vision Awards 2016. We were here last year, excited to be back and uh, talking to probably the person that has the most fun uh, evening of the night. Woo -hoo, <laughs> the best job ever. That's right, Anna Pinzak, <laughs> the MC of the awards. So welcome. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. But you have a day job too. You're the I executive do. vice president, chief product officer of Veritas. A big title and a big job. That is true. Yeah, I do products during the day and Oprah Winfrey. At night or something. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> so, talk a, a little bit about Anita Borg and, and what this this organization has done and is doing for you know women specifically in technology. Yeah. So, you know, Anita Borg and I got involved with Anita Borg about ten years ago, right? And Anita Borg is really about building uh, capabilities for women in computing, women in, in technologies, and in particular, being the preeminent organization for women in technology. There's quite a few organizations, but we differentiate ourselves because. First of all, we're the biggest. We offer the most programs. And we really focus on technology women, not just women at large, and there's many organizations that do that. But we focus on really catering to growing the population, um, making companies responsible right, for doing the right things to promote and provide advantages to women in the workplace, um, and really influencing the industry as well. So what are the things that we need to do from a policy perspective to make sure that women have opportunities, right, in, in the technical fields. Yeah, and I think it's a, it, it's a really interesting distinction that you bring up, because we've had that conversation before, um, I think with Elizabeth last year, that, yeah. you know, there's a lot of, of ways you can get involved in technology and not be a technologist, marketing role, sales that's role, right, HR, right. et cetera. Uh, but, it, but Anita Borg is specifically focused on technical roles. Yeah, it is, and you know what? Um, we're actually having that debate as part of Anita Borg, because technology is sort of, it, it's sort of growing in every part of an organization, right? So you have marketing that now you're doing data science and you're mining information and you're doing demand generation, you know, with computing. And so we're sort of going through that conversation now where you say, who is a woman technologist? Traditionally, it's been mostly women in computing, you know, women that have done mostly engineering kind of fields, right? But when you look at women in technology today, you know, they're really uh, sort of pervasive across many organizations, right? So there's marketing women that are technologists. Certainly IT organizations have a lot of women technologists. Uh, in my organization, you know, product development is all about, you know, right. technologists, right? So we're having that conversation, and I think it's going to expand over time. You know, as the world goes digital, you know, and people go into sort of the internet of everything right. type world, right? many more companies that have not been traditionally sort of viewed as technology companies even evolved to do technology, right? So who would have thought that, you know, GE, you know, um, engines or whatever are really mostly about software and technology right. today, right? So um, it's forcing uh, organizations like ours, you know, to really start to think about who's the audience of the future. That's an interesting take because, you know, there's the roles that are different than yeah. just pure engineering roles. But as you just said, the functions are all becoming much more technology-based. And, and, you know, we have a premise, and, and I believe it strongly, that every company is really a technology company. It's just what do you wrap your technology around, what product, what service, whether it's GE. You know, we've That's covered right. the Ford Innovation Center launch here in Silicon Valley. Arguably, your car is your largest yeah. wearable uh, right. and IoT <laughs> thing right. that we all have going That's on right office, now. That's my office, you know? <laughs> right. And, it, so. and as you mentioned before we came on air, you know, your journey um, has gone from different companies and different roles and different functions, all kind of wrapped within this technology field. Yeah, it is that way. You know, it's interesting. I mean, I'm a mechanical engineer, you know, so it's, that's, that's the most sort of grounded set of, you know, engineering. It's very physical, right? But to go from that to recognize that even a lot of mechanical engineering is shifting to control systems, to computing things that manage mechanical things, right? That's what my career has been around, you know, about. So I've gone from engineering more to services, you know, with the cloud, with everything being connected with sensors. You know, everything is really about sort of delivering a service with an outcome to our customers. And so you're seeing all kinds of organizations moving to be more technology, you know, friendly and enabled, right? From banks to 
um, you know, electrical companies to, you know, traditional oil and gas companies. You know, everybody's really a technology company this day. These yeah, days. we talked to BNY Mellon last year. They were the company award winner. And if you think about it, most interactions now with the bank are electronic, oh, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. There's not a lot of going into the yeah. teller or going down even on the commercial side to go work with your local banker. Yeah, and it's interesting. You know, I just went to visit a small bank in the southeast and I didn't meet with the person that, that's just the CIO. I met with sort of the chief digital officer now, right? Because what you know, traditional companies are going through is how do you digitize, you know, and how you go from sort of an, a physical bank or a teller, you know, to being really an online entity, right? right. So imagine if you know, more traditional little companies are transforming. Just imagine what that's going to do to technology really across the world. Right, so I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about your journey, because obviously when you got started yeah. a while back, you know, there were a lot less women involved in technology. How did you choose this path? How did you get through some of your early um, kind of challenges? And, and then what advice are you giving uh, young girl or older girls and young women now? Yeah, so you know, um, sometimes I feel that, you know, life is sort of a, a, a series of zigzags. You know, you don't plan out necessarily to go into technology and it's a, a direct path. You know, for me, I started out with mechanical engineering, working information systems for factory floors. And this is at, at the time of client server computing. I mean, you know, Sun workstations were right. kind of new at that time, <laughs> you know. So that led me to like, hey, this stuff is really cool and interesting, but computer science was really a new, a new field. Um, so I, you know, what I decided to do was to insert myself more into things that had to do with IT and technology. Uh, I was at AT&T at the time, and I eventually ended up running the IP backbone for AT&T, so going from factory floors to much more core, you know, internet-related right. things. you made a good move. I made a great <laughs> move, you know, so, um, and that was really at the beginning of the internet when, you know, when uh, Al Gore invented it. <laughs> so, or, 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 or Steve well, Case, Steve shipping Case, CDs, you know, that's if, right. if that's where you draw that's the line. That's right, you know, so, um, and that was in the early 90s. Um, and from there, you know, I mean, what's been happening is things change so quickly. You know, if you think about it, we have companies today that didn't exist, you know, five years ago. If you look at the Twitters and the, right. you know, all these companies that are emerging. So for me, what I ended up doing is saying, okay, the kind of skills that I need need to shift. I can't sort of rely on my old skills. Um, I went back to school several times. I actually went back to school. I went to Carnegie Mellon here locally to get a degree in software management. This is the compliment. Really? Yeah. And what kind of a degree was it? It was a master's in software management, oh, wow. you know, and it was a, a two-year program. And I did that when I was working and had kids, you know. Um, busy life. Yeah, it's a busy, <laughs> it's a busy life. But, you know, part of that is, you know, and what I tell young women is you can't rely on your old knowledge, you know, because the world shifts so fast. So I think it's important to be kind of a, a, learning, uh, a learning person, right, number one. And the second thing is take risk. Go take a different kind of job. And that's a little bit of what I've done. You know, I've gone from engineering to then to services. I've gone to sales. And now I run a product organization. But in so doing, you know, I mean, look, when I went into the sales uh, role, I'd never done sales before. And right. I'm sort of jumping into right. it, right? So, uh, you know, what I tell girls is, you know, don't ever limit yourself by what you think you don't know, right? You know, most guys basically say, hey, what is that? You know, I can do it. Yep, I'll be over right, there, right. right? And so that, you know, that sense of confidence of feeling like you can do anything and you can learn uh, and make mistakes, right? right? And learn along the way is really important. Those are, you know, two big lessons. Um, the third lesson I tell women is just um, get mentors because you're going to learn from other people, right? Mentors and sponsors, but you know, leverage all these people around you. Don't think you're perfect. You don't have to be. But, you know, get a bunch of people that can help you sort of orient you. So if you go, you know, if you go this way left, you know, and you should be zigzagging right, you know, they'll tell you. Well, Anna, that's great yeah. tip. Great tip. And are you looking forward to this fun? You got some good jokes uh, keyed up I know, for tonight? yeah. No, I don't know. I was going <laughs> to talk about my mom. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. No, yeah. I'm sure you'll knock it out of the park. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. All right. Well, thank, yeah. it's, thank uh, you so much. Absolutely. And, yeah. and uh, good luck tonight. Have fun tonight. Thank and will we see you in um, at Grace Hopper in October? Yes. Yeah, I'll be there. I'm bringing a contingent of about 100 women with me. Oh, terrific. So, yeah, we'll be there. All right, okay. Anna Pinzuck, I'm Jeff Frick. Thanks Thank again. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, yeah. you're watching theCUBE. We're at the Anita Borg Women of Vision Awards 2015. Thanks for watching.